Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And today we have a very exciting video because today I want to talk about exploration ships. This is a very highly requested category. I know a lot of people have asked me to talk about the Odyssey and the Carrick and that comparison. And uh, today I would like to take the opportunity to go through all of the exploration ships. Now, uh, right at the start of this video, before we get into things, I want to extend a big thank you to everybody supporting the channel and liking the videos. Uh, the channel has been doing really well lately uh, with everybody watching the videos, liking and commenting. And I know January is usually a slower month for Star Citizen as the team and the developers get back in the studio after the holidays. So I really appreciate the community support uh, for the channel over this month. So thank you guys for supporting the channel. I also want to say uh, to uh, go check out Star Jump. This uh, website that I'm using here to view all of the spaceships, I will leave a link in the video description if you guys want to check out uh, ships and build your fleet for yourself. I know I have a lot of people ask me about this uh, software that I use, Star Jump Fleet Viewer. I cannot recommend it highly enough. So I'm going to kind of save the big exploration ships for last and right off the bat we're going to get started with the ground vehicles we're going to go from the bottom to the top here and uh the ships and vehicles that i'm going to cover in this video are ships and vehicles that are categorized by cag as being in the exploration gameplay loop but some liberties were taken uh, it, it, a good case of this is in the G12. It is technically categorized as a towing vehicle, but I think it really exemplifies all of the features that a good exploration ground vehicle should have. And so to get right into that, the features that I think are very useful for exploration ground vehicle to have is, you know, the ability to carry the new uh, personal SCU storage boxes. Uh, it, the G12 has two size ones. Guns has a fully enclosed cabin where you can seat two players. It's probably more than likely going to have, you know, places for you to put your weapons, personal storage uh, components that are detachable. Um, and so if you compare that to something like Cyclone, it does have the ability to hold the box, but it doesn't have weapons. It's not fully enclosed. Um, so it, if you were going to go with one over the other, the G12 is a very um, interesting proposition, in my opinion, especially at the price, too. Then, technically, the Lynx and Us Rover are also categorized as exploration vehicles. I believe the Lynx is more on the towing side. Okay, but they are both very similar. They're both fully enclosed. They both have two size one guns. Uh, they can both hold passengers in the back. They both have, you know, the detachable components, personal storage um, and whatnot. So I think uh, they are both, you know, tried and true, a very useful exploration vehicles. And if you're going out with a crew, the standard Ursa Rover can seat six, which is very valuable. It has uh, you know, two exits and entrances, which is also very valuable with the ramp at the back. Um, yeah, these are very good exploration vehicles. And again, I'm very excited for the G12 to come out. Honestly, I think it will be a good ground vehicle. Now, of course, you guys know me and how I feel about hovercrafts. I think uh, for exploration gameplay specifically, hovercrafts, would be more useful because they would be a lot faster. And the way I kind of see things is that there are different categories for the use cases of these ships. Now, uh, for something that has more tight spaces like caves, distribution centers, cities, as uh, CIG builds out these larger settlements and whatnot, you might want to drive around them in something that moves a lot slower. It is uh, a lot harder to handle a hover vehicle at slower speeds. And so a ground vehicle uh, would be more useful, especially one that can carry more cargo and whatnot. So I think at those slower speeds, ground vehicles still have, uh, wheeled vehicles specifically, still have a big purpose. 
but then for those vast areas that you want to cover uh in situations like the daymar valley you can see the the hover vehicles just far surpass any of the wheel wheel vehicles in terms of time and you really want to see these planets explore these planets really take advantage of the vast distances the technology that CIG is uh you know utilizing in this game i think a hovercraft would be better for those wide open spaces so i think right now in terms of uh, exploration vehicles wheel vehicles we have a pretty good lineup i think the g12 is going to be one of the most exciting ones to come out next we're going to move on to the starter ships that are exploration ships and in this category we have the cutter rambler and the cax pisces now the pisces is determined to be an exploration ship because it is essentially the snub fighter for the Kavok. so you have a Kavok and an exploration team and you want to go down on the planet and do whatever you have to do to explore the surface and so the pisces is designed to hold those personal SCU cargo boxes. You have two crew members and then the pilot. So three of you can go on this vehicle. It has the size one guns for defense. Um, but more than likely, this is kind of like a runabout ship for your larger exploration ship. It's not a dedicated exploration ship. And so it's kind of in its own little subcategory. And then we have the Cutter Rambler, which is really positioned to be a dedicated starter exploration ship it has additional features uh, over the standard cutter because it has that uh, environmental suit locker it has more uh, weapons racks it has that little table it has a jump seat uh, for you know a friend or somebody that you're transporting but its downsides is that it has less cargo space for or, you know the personal storage boxes um, and in terms of benefits, it does have more fuel, which is good. Uh, added fuel, or it's supposed to have more fuel. The added fuel is, uh, you know, designed for exploration, so you can stay out there a little bit longer. It's not a bad ship. Uh, personally, I think it comes down to preference, what you're going to, you know, uh, want out of your exploration gameplay. I think if you want to prioritize you know, looting and, you know, going to these locations and acquiring things. Um, if your exploration gameplay loop uh, consists of going to locations and looting gear, I think looting gear and going to different locations, doing that is a part of exploration gameplay. Um, and if that's something that you prioritize, the standard cutter, in my opinion, might be more valuable. It really depends on the environments that you're going to find yourself in um, because that environmental suit might come in handy in certain situations, in certain star systems like Pyro, where you have to you know, deal with these solar flares and whatnot. Not bad offerings in the you know starter section, but we have a lot of ships to cover, so let's keep going. Next, we have the Freelancer Dill. This is a very interesting ship because it has that onboard uh, refinery, kind of like the Origin ships, where you know it it can make its own hydrogen fuel. It has a fuel scoop. Um, it is very similar spec wise to the uh, the standard Freelancer. Um, right here, it has this unique paint job on it. You know, it has good pilot control guns has a good amount of storage it can seat for and it can sleep for doesn't have a whole ton of amenities and the thing with that is in my personal opinion if you're doing exploration if you're out there kind of on your own or if you have a crew with you in my personal opinion you want some creature comforts to make living on this ship a better experience and because of the freelancers kind of tight quarters that's kind of difficult i think as a bunker runner uh as a if you're a loot goblin and you're going to different settlements and locations looting things it is a good ship for that because it has a lot of cargo space has a lot of pilot control guns and it has that side door so you don't have to run through the entire ship every time you want to get in and out of it uh so I think this is actually a good ship for a solo explorer, 
but I think it is a bit cramped for a whole team. Then we have the Zeus Mark II. This is a really interesting ship. I think this is going to be an extremely popular exploration ship uh, for groups of friends. Okay, so it has good pilot control guns, has turret on the bottom, as uh, about 32 SCU of cargo, which is, you know, more than enough if you're doing bunker ones, if you're doing the loot goblin thing, if you're doing uh, exploration as towing different locations, um, that is more than enough cargo for that use case. Now, is it enough cargo if you're interested in trading? Probably not but it's uh, large enough for you to more likely fit a ground vehicle. Hopefully, you know, you could fit a ground vehicle like the G12 in there. I really don't know what the metrics are. I know when the ship comes up, people will certainly test that, uh, but you should easily be able to fit an STV back there. So, you know, you could fit the personal storage boxes. You can fit the STV. It has, you know, an airlock with a ladder at the front so you don't have to walk through the entire ship every time you want to get in it and off of it it has the suit lockers it has a kitchenette it has the bunk beds for the crew um the creature it doesn't have a ton of creature comforts but i think it is sufficient if it's just the three of you the pilot and two other people um i don't think it's too bad for uh you know short expeditions um so i think this is going to be a very popular exploration ship in the community then we have the big boy the corsair this launch was very popular with the community because it's a good ship it has a lot of cargo i think it has around 72 su cargo you can hold snub fighters like the fury you can hold ground vehicles like the ursa you can hold a decent amount of cargo you could actually do some cargo trading with this ship um it has a armory it has that side uh, you know airlock it has a secondary entrance that elevator that goes all the way through from the ground to the middle of the ship all the way to the roof if you want to do a little bit of sniping up there it has dedicated rooms for everybody so unlike the freelancer Dur and the zeus mark 2 es Everybody gets their own room instead of a bunk bed. It even has a captain's quarters. You know, it has that little kitchenette area. It has that engineering area in the middle. So you can kind of do what you want to do. It has two gun turrets on the side. It has a lot of pilot controlled DPS. It's biggest downside in my personal opinion are its wings. If the wings get shot off, that can be a problem. And it's landing gear. It's landing gear is fairly low. So it makes it hard to land on uneven terrain. And in my personal opinion, landing on uneven terrain is kind of a major priority for an exploration ship. Because when you're exploring, you're going to be landing in areas and situations that are more than likely not going to be flat. And those wings can get in the way if you want to get into some tight spaces. But all in all, the Corsair is an excellent exploration ship. It is honestly more of a gunship for a lot of people because it is so capable in combat. A lot of pirates like using it. A lot of uh, solo explorers like using it. Um, it. It is honestly just a great ship and it's no wonder why it's so popular. Then we have the 400i. The 400i is a very interesting one. And I know there's a lot of conversation recently about CIG potentially renaming it because there's kind of a weird uh, missing link in Origins lineup. They really don't have a ship that really competes with something like the, the Cutlass and the Zeus. The, the 400i is just a bit too large. Um, people want a ship in between the 300i and the 400i. So um, I know people have been talking, you know, Maybe CIG should rename this to the 500i, one below the 600i, which in my opinion would make sense, or to bring the, the 300i down to the 200i. But whatever CIG decides to do, if they decide to do nothing at all, the 400i is a very interesting ship. And we recently got the X1 out. The X1 is a hover bike that is designed to go with the 400i. It also has a cargo and vehicle bay at the back. It has escape pods, it has suit lockers, it has an airlock, it has climate controlled 
uh, engineering department. It has pretty good creature comforts. Uh, all the crew does not have their own room, but the captain has its own room. And the, the other two crew members have their own room. The ship is designed for three, similarly to the Zeus, but it has that nice kitchenette and seating area. Uh, the, the main thing uh, here is it has uh, that navigation table. Uh, it has uh, two totes at the back for your friends. Pilot control guns, not that much. It really doesn't hold its own against something like the Corsair and it doesn't have that much cargo. I would say those are the major downsides about this ship. It puts it in kind of a weird class, to be perfectly honest with you, because uh, it has the shields for a ship its size, but it doesn't really have the firepower or cargo capacity. So it's kind of a head scratcher for a lot of people. Um, it is very comparable to something like the, the Zeus. I mean, you look at the 400 eyes cargo capacity you compared to the Corsair in terms of size the Corsair is smaller but it has much more cargo capacity it can hold larger vehicles and snuff fighters it has a lot more guns it has similar shields um the Corsair for a lot of people in a lot of people's minds is a lot more useful as an exploration ship than the 400 i again the 400 i is technically considered a towing ship but in my opinion, because of those suit lockers, climb control engineering, the hover bike in the front here, it's shields, it's handling in atmosphere. It's pretty good at landing on unlevel terrain. I really have never had a problem landing a 400i. Uh, it does pretty good in terms of, you know, being able to put it where you need to put it, land where you need to land. In my opinion, it is a very good exploration ship for a small group of friends or a solo pilot um it is an interesting ship it's just in a weird position but it's a ship that i uh you know i'm very fond of then we have the constellation aquila this is the dedicated exploration variant of the constellation series it is a fairly well gunned um it has good cargo and stores capabilities. It doesn't have a lot of the creature comforts as the 400i or even something like the Corsair with its dedicated crew rooms. Of course, this has bunk beds like the Freelancers. The visibility out of the cockpit is better than the other Constellation series ships. And it, of course, has that snub fighter at the back, which comes in handy when you want to explore the surfaces of planets and uh, move on more freely from the main ship now um i would say its primary downsides is that it is very good at some things but it's not super great at uh, all of the things that you want for exploration it doesn't really have suit lockers uh, or escape pods or you know, you know uh dedicated engineering areas um it does have a turret, I believe, one turret. I, I think the other one is a scanner. It's a good ship. I think there's just a lot of competition right now, especially from the Corsair, uh, 61 meters to 52 meters. But again, the Corsair has those wings that can get in the way sometimes. The Constellation, also in terms of landing, can be a little front heavy, but I generally have an easier time landing in Aquila than I do a Corsair. Your mileage might vary. I think it's a very cool, very interesting ship. And it's not a bad choice if you're looking to get a, a ship for exploration. Really, the ships that are the most enticing are probably going to be the Zeus or the Corsair. Um, in terms of firepower, it is pretty effective, though. Then we have one of the most exciting ships uh, and i think these three ships up here on this top row are kind of the most exciting ships in uh, for exploration also the most interesting okay so all of these three ships share certain things but have different specific use cases i would say um and we're going to really start off with the 600i explorer now, the 600i Explorer is kind of set to uh, be reworked. So, the the 
current asset that we have in game is not its final form CAG is going to update the interior to be a lot more useful so it is going to have a full armory it is going to have a full medical bay it is going to have a vehicle hanger that can fit a tank it is going to have a secondary cargo area a small cargo area that might presumably be used for smuggling it is going to have a new uh hollow table so you can uh, explore it is going to have dedicated crew rooms and of course it has that very nice captain's room up at the front of course it is designed for three people this ship uh it also ha is going to have you know that docking collar on the side and that elevator up at the front i've also never really had too much problems landing a 600i has very high landing gear so you can land wherever you need to um this is going to be a very interesting ship it also has a lot of pilot controlled guns it's one of the few ships its size with its shields that has uh these uh three size fives here that the pilot can't control so in terms of uh solo exploration this is probably the biggest you're going to want to go uh but if you're taking three friends with you this is going to be extremely effective um i think a lot of people are going to be excited about this ship with the medical bay with the armory having those you know nicer crew rooms i mean this is just the ship you're going to want to get if you want to uh live uh out in the stars and explore with your friends you'll be able to put the g12 in here and still have cargo capacity because uh, the cargo elevator goes straight up to the second floor to the secondary cargo area okay that armory so you can get kitted out so every single person on your crew is going to be able to have the environmental suits and you know possibly different loadouts set up in that armory okay this i think is going to be one of the most exciting ship updates uh just because it's so useful just because it is so specific and tailor-made for the type of gameplay i think that a lot of people expect out of the exploration gameplay loop okay the major thing it's missing is a dedicated ship hanger for a snob um but you're more than likely going to be able to fit both a g12 and a fury in that vehicle hangar if it can fit a tank okay then we're going to move on to the carrick the carrick is kind of the king of exploration ships right now it has a lot going for it um it really it needs its own video um it has two it has a two-story bridge okay it has a captain's quarters now, it does not have dedicated rooms for the crew. This was a repurposed military ship, so it has bunk beds. That might be a factor if you're, you know, considering the comfortability of the crew, its ability to, you know, be that ship that everybody locks out and stays on. But it has a lot of creature comforts with the billiards table, uh, recreation area, spacious bathroom, you know it has that dining room for everyone to sit at and plan out what they have to do as a cartography deck has more than enough space for everybody um it, it, and the way that the ship is designed it really does feel like it has those creature comforts for everyone to stay out on a long expedition it has the medical bay it has a vehicle garage at the front it has a ton of cargo space that are actually modules that can be swapped out to different things in the future just like the galaxy we don't know what these modules are just yet but i'm assuming they can be something that really upgrades the functionality of this ship it has a drone hangar so you can send drones out and probe out into space uh, i'm not entirely sure what some of these drones are going to do but you might be able to configure it with uh, you know different types of drones you know you, maybe one drone might be a repair drone so if you run into trouble you run into pirates they attack you your ship gets damaged you can have the drone pilot go out and use the drone to repair the outside of the ship hull which would be very useful 
it has a little repair maintenance area with what a lot of people speculate is some kind of 3D printer. Maybe it might have onboard crafting. Um, this ship is a very versatile ship. Large engineering area for your engineer to do everything it needs to do. And of course, turrets. Now, it doesn't have any missiles. Doesn't have any pilot control guns. Again, we don't know what the modules on a ship like this is going to be. It doesn't have a full size hanger. It has that extra small hanger. But in terms of really what you can do with this ship to explore with a group of friends, it, it really isn't limited by much. Um, this ship is going to be very capable and there's a lot of people that are excited to really see the full potential of this ship. Right now though, I think the 600i Explorer really embodies what the exploration gameplay is right now. I think the Carrick embodies what the exploration gameplay will be in the future, okay? And then we have the Odyssey, which is in a very interesting position because it doesn't strictly embody the exploration gameplay loop that we have right now, but it has a ton of things that really put it at the pinnacle of the exploration gameplay loop. It has a full size hangar. So you can really turn this ship into anything that you can fit in there. I know a lot of people uh, talking about what can really fit in this hangar. You might uh, put a be able to put a vulture in this hangar you might be able to put an expanse in this hangar so putting these different ships in this hangar will kind of be able to transform this ship with these different use cases how many uh furies can you fit in this hangar okay then it has a vehicle bay at the front and a fairly decent amount of cargo i believe it's 262 and that doesn't take away from the vehicle uh, storage. So you can have that vehicle and 262 SCU of cargo. It also has a medical bay, okay? So if you run into trouble, you can fix up your crew, okay? It also has that, its main claim to fame is its ability to mine and refine quantanium to extend its uh, expedition out into space. Okay. Um, it has three turrets with two size fives on them. None are pilot controlled as of right now, but the all remote turrets. So the entire crew is going to be on the bridge of this ship. Uh, it has dedicated rooms for each of the crew members. This is another one of those creature comfort things that I think is going to be really valuable on a, on a long journey. If you're out in space for a long time, you're really going to want your own space. So people aren't really elbow to elbow with each other. Uh, you can, you know, put your load out the, the spoils of your journey in your own, uh, in your own bedroom and kind of have that privacy. Now it, it, it also has VTOL. There's a viewing room at the back. Now it's really interesting because this refinery it just goes directly into the fuel tank. So it's not something that can be used with other ships and vehicles that kind of limits, you know, it's true potential in my opinion. Um, but I still think that for long away journeys, it's a very interesting ship. But the question is, should you choose something like the Odyssey over the Carrick or the 600 I Explorer? I don't know because we really don't know where the exploration gameplay loop is going to end up landing. For me personally, right now, I think the 600 I explore is the way to go. I think if you want to just go with a single dedicated ship that kind of does a little bit of everything, the Odyssey and the Carrick are going to be great choices. But my personal opinion, until we see more about this gameplay, I think a lot of people are going to gravitate to the 600i Explorer, the Zeus Mark II, and the G12. Those are kind of my three winners of this category right now. But hey, I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think of this category? What do you think about the exploration gameplay loop? What do you think about these very cool, very exciting ships? 
Uh, in my personal opinion, they're all winners and we're all winners because all of these ships are a lot of fun. This is just a little speculation. This is just a little chit chat between me and you guys about the cool ships that are in this game. I want to know the ships that you like. Why do you like them? What are you excited about most? Are you excited about the Odyssey? Excited about the 600i rework? Are you excited about the Zeus Mark II? I already feel like a lot of people are excited about the Zeus Mark II and 600i Explore. Every time I go on Reddit or Spectrum, people are always asking when they can get an update about these ships. I think they're very hot topics right now. And then, of course, I know a whole ton of people aren't excited about the G12, but personally, I think it's going to be a powerhouse in the exploration gameplay loop. But that's going to be it for me here today, you guys. Uh, it was a lot of fun hanging out with you. But like I said, at the end of all of these videos, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Salute.